YouTube Dawson Writer here. In today's video, I'm going to be ranking all of the current eras of Power Rangers as of this recording. Now, I'm going to be doing this a little bit differently. I have done a discussion and ranking on Power Rangers eras previously, and obviously the Hasbro era is still in progress, so it is going to be on this list, but in kind of a like tentative placing based on their current progress. And I will likely revisit this as we get deeper into the Hasbro era, but I thought now was a good time to do it as we are winding down this current iteration of it before the possible reboot, and that's when I think we'll get a real taste for what the Hasbro era feels like. So I wanted to document my thoughts now, especially as there is a lot of discussion about the way Hasbro is handling things, the presence of the Power Rangers brand, and I wanted to discuss the similarities and differences as of this moment. Meant to be a fun discussion, I hope the comments, I'm sure futilely, but I hope the comments don't get too heated and negative at Hasbro, but this is just more meant to be an interesting discussion. Now what's going to be unique about this video is this isn't going to be a simple ranking of the four eras, I'm going to separate them into multiple eras within each one, and you'll see what I mean as the video goes, but I think with the, with the exception of the Hasbro era currently, each one has roughly, I think, two to distinct eras within each era that is worth ranking. And this is a personal list, but it's also a little bit objective too, as I considered stuff like the presence of the Power Rangers popularity. And just to give you an idea of what I mean by that, the number two pick on this list is actually my number one favorite era. But let's get started and you'll see how this list is going to go. It'll make more sense as I go. I feel like I made that needlessly confusing. Anyway, I have the chart here. So let's get started. So I think that the, at the bottom of the list is the tail end of the Disney era. Now this is effectively RPM and MMPR reversioning. I think this was the lowest point of the franchise for a couple reasons. Obviously because at the time it seemed like PR was going to be winding down for a significant amount of time. You know, after RPM officially ended the show for the most part at the time, we did have MMPR reversioning, but that was such a weird time. It was like kind of watching them like prop up PR's corpse so that they could have the MMPR 2010 toy line. And it was just such a strange spot. I think Power Rangers had the weirdest and weakest positioning as a franchise at that moment. And it was in this sort of like limbo, but you were also certain it wasn't going to make it. But it obviously did. But it was such a weird period of time. So obviously it's a huge negative because it seemed like the franchise was, was going to die on a really sad note with MMPR reversioning. But I think what makes that era even worse was it started with this great potential of what could have been, with RPM being a really strong last at the time proper season. And if I remember right, I don't remember every single detail, but if I remember right, Originally, RPM was sort of retooled a little bit because they were rebranding Jetix to Disney XD, and they wanted to age up and slightly retool Power Rangers to air alongside Aaron Stone as one of their tent poles. But then, at more or less the last minute, they decided not to and just burned off the episodes. I think that sours this section of the era even more because it gives you not only this terrible era where Power Rangers was almost dead, but also... RPM kind of gives you a window into what could have been. You know, actually, Aaron Stone was a pretty fun show, and I can't help but think, what if RPM had aired there, and RPM and Aaron Stone had taken off, or, you know, the network had taken off? I mean, Disney XD is still around, but it's a bit different, but, like, it gives you kind of a glimpse into what could have been. Would Power Rangers still be with Disney on sort of an autopilot? Who knows? But it's kind of, it's the worst era because it not only ended on a low note, but it started with a glimpse into a higher note. After that is the tail end of the Neo Saban era, basically right before Hasbro bought the brand. Basically the after the movie flopped and the Ninja Steel era. Now I distincted this era because I think it represented a low point in the sense that I feel that that era in general had a lot of like purgatory elements. I always use that word to describe it because it was very much so samey. We dialed back to MMPR maturity and we just kind of stayed in this purgatory. But within that, there was a lot of amb ambition on Saban uh, brand's part to make the brand happen in multiple different avenues. And it felt like during that last year plus or so time, however long it was before we knew Hasbro bought the brand, there was this sense of kind of just resigning yourself to your fate that like if they had kept it, they likely would have just kept us in that purgatory for X amount of time, and it felt like any ambitions that they had that gave you more hope outside of the purgatory of the show were dead. Obviously, it ended on a positive note, at least for me, in the sense that the franchise went on to new pastures, but that era distinctly, I think, was kind of a sad moment, because it didn't feel like the show was ending, but it felt like you were resigned to just stay within the crap we were getting, and that there wasn't any ambition to go forward. It was like this weird limbo you were in as a fan, where it wasn't like the end of the Disney era where Power Rangers was probably going to be done at that moment, at least, you know, from that point of view at the time, but, but you just kind of resigned yourself to your fate, and I felt like that was the way that Saban felt too. It just felt like we were all like, well, we're in this together in the boring times. After that is the current Hasbro era. Now, it is lower on the list. I do not have the needless 
toxic negativity that a lot of fans have towards it. And again, this is a tentative placing, and I think there has been a lot of positives about the Hasbro era, but it's lower on the list because, for the most part, Outside of the Lightning Collection, the lion's share of everything they've done has just been kind of continuation slash slight extension of the Neo Saban era as they run out their existing contracts and prepare for their true reboot whenever that comes. And I think there has been positives. Like, you know, mixed problems aside, I think there's been a lot of positives about the Lightning Collection. I thought Once and Always was great. I think Dino Fury was an improvement. I think in general, though the show isn't leaps and bounds above the Neo Saban era, it has steadily improved to a degree. We've continued the Boom Comics. But for the most part, it's just been a continuation and slight improvement of core Neo Saban principles with kind of promises for the future, which I'm excited by. I like a lot of the talk and ambition they have to break outside of the franchise mold. But right now, that's all it is, is talk. So I can't rank it any higher because the next one on the list is just going to be the proper Neo Saban era. Now, I would argue that, like, in that Neo Saban era, they did have higher ambitions for stuff like the movie and allowing for stuff like the comics, which is great. But I would argue that I am more excited about the ambitions Hasbro has for the main series becoming a reboot than I am for, like, I prefer that to Saban's ambitions of the main series staying as is and dialing back to this weird MMPR Sentai adaption hybrid. I mean, MMPR was a Sentai adaption, but you know what I mean. It was like doing, you know, Sentai adaptions every couple years, but like through this weird MMPR lens. So like, I prefer the idea of Hasbro's reboot to the idea of Neo Saban's future with the main show. But again, I have to rank Neo Saban higher because right now, as of this recording, all Hasbro has is ideas. And the Neo Saban era, for all of its faults, did have a lot of positives, you know? There was some bright spots within the show to enjoy. It brought Power Rangers back after that extremely low point of that in Disney era. It had a presence on the toy shelves. You know, even though it didn't work out, I loved the movie. I'm glad we got it. I appreciate the at-the-time ambition they had for it to do something like that and allow the show to stay the kid's show and do that maybe as the mature thing, even though I think... I wish the show would have been better. And of course, they also allowed for stuff like the Boom Comics, which I continue to love it to this day, and stuff like Hyper Force. So there was enough positives, and I think that even though that era isn't my favorite in its core, there was some good stuff in there, and I appreciated the ambition that, that Saban and Saban Brands wanted something to happen with the brand on multiple levels, and did succeed in a couple different avenues, which are still paying off today. After that is sort of the prime Saban Entertainment era, I, and by that I mean kind of just the middle era, sort of I would say like Turbo through the end, or like mid Zeo through the end, or whatever. You'll see what I mean by the time I get to number one, but this was kind of just like after PR had baselined. You know, you, you dropped off the MMPR initial boom and the hype, and you know, I don't know the exact chart of like what series were more popular and what the ebbs and flows were, but for the most part it felt like we hit just a steady level of Power Rangers general success. Like it did never have a big boom again, but it was just doing well on this autopilot where it had a presence on Fox Kids. It was a staple that the established audience got excited for. They did decent promotion for it, you know, specialized ads for the season. Uh, you had presence on the toy shelves. There wasn't anything too huge significant of note. I mean, obviously it's stuff like Forever Red, but there was no tent poles like a new movie or a comic series or anything like that. It was just kind of business as usual, but it was kind of just a core good kind of autopilot era. For the runner-up, even though it's the runner-up on this list, it is my personal favorite era, which you probably know from other multiple videos, is the Disney era. The Disney era is interesting because when people talk about this era, they often talk about how Disney does not care about the brand, which is true, but it's not. And by Disney doesn't care, it's like they obviously cared about making money, but they just didn't care about making Power Rangers happen. They didn't care about Gretchen making Fetch happen. Like, they, once they realized that they could effectively set Power Rangers up with what it needed to do and turn something of a profit, they just set it up and let it do its thing. But they didn't care about, like, expanding anything. Like, you know, even though the Neo Saban era in terms of the show was, like, purgatory, they had ambitions for the movie and the comics and all that. Hasbro, people working on it have ambitions for this reboot and whatever else. But Disney had no ambitions other than turning the profit they knew for minimal effort, effectively. And it's crazy that effectively... And by minimal effort, I mean corporate. I don't mean the people working on the show who worked very hard on it. But it's crazy that Disney effectively putting something on autopilot is one of the best eras of the franchise, in my opinion. Like, it wasn't as, uh, you know, present as, like, the early Saban eras, 
but it had a really good steady presence. It continued the presence in terms of the merchandising that we had from the core Saban, Saban era, uh, the Saban era with the merchandise on the shelves and, you know, other odds and ends merchandising, uh, little mini anniversary uh, merchandising events like the 15th anniversary. But most of all, Jetix, I think, was its strongest thing. Jetix was basically the Power Rangers slash Fox Kids tribute network, where it was primarily Power Rangers reruns as well as Digimon reruns. I rewatched so many times that, uh, uh, PR seasons and Digimon seasons on their reruns, and it was an excellent outlet that constantly kept those shows on the air, constantly having different themed marathons, um, you know, until near the end, they also had really cool individual trailers and, like, uh, you know, character trailers and stuff like that. It was on autopilot, but it was the best autopilot I've ever seen. They weren't trying to make any big events happen, but it was a really great just baseline to exist. Like, honestly, in a way, if, you know, I would want the show to bring in new creatives every now and then, but I, I would, wouldn't would mind if the show had existed like that for just a long time, you know, because it wasn't like any huge surprises, but it was very consistent. The number one era is the initial MMPR popularity boom, which for this list, I'm going to count as the beginning of MMPR through the very beginning of Zeo, just because I think obviously the hype was like the MMPR hype. I think this was the best era of the franchise for the franchise. Again, my favorite is the Jetix Disney era, but I think this was the franchise's best era as obviously it was this huge popularity boom where it was the most Power Rangers had ever been in mainstream. It was the phenomenon, you know, probably not on the level, no, definitely not on the level of like Pokemon phenomenon or like when the Phantom Menace came out and stuff like that, but it was as close as we got to something like that. Uh, for Power Rangers, and the fact that that franchise had a time period like that where, where it was a phenomenon is great. You know, that it makes it the best era where it was the most prominent, leading all the way through the hype for the movie. I feel like the movie didn't do blockbuster numbers. I never looked into that, but from what I remember from Little Kid Me riding that MMPR hype train, the movie was absolutely a part of that, you know, remembering watching the trailers and getting the McDonald's toys. And then obviously, you know, it kind of was downhill from there, and I wouldn't say the season three Zeo era was a part of the pop cultural pop uh, popular era, but I would say that for me, that's kind of the distinct most exciting era of the franchise was when MMPR had that boom right to the beginning of Zeo because I think that was the last big excitement that felt more mainstream-ish. I don't think the beginning of Zeo was as mainstream as MMPR's boom, but I think the last time I felt an excitement for Power Rangers outside of like the core people who watched it uh, was the Zeo lead up was because it was really exciting and mysterious and that was like the last significant event I remember feeling excited outside of the bubble of kids like me that watched the franchise I mean obviously other kids watch it but you know what I mean like the people that dropped off the more casual fans and I think that was the franchise's heyday and I don't think it'll ever probably get back there I, as much as I want PR success and think that if you know all the stars align which is a long shot I think the reboot stuff could be successful but I don't see it being something like you know, when Star Wars had a second and third boom when Phantom Menace and Force Awakens came out, or when Pokemon Go came out. I feel that's an even bigger long shot, but that is just my list. Let me know your list of favorite eras in the comments as always, and let's try to keep it civil. Until next time, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and climb a steps and ring that bell. See you in notifications for all my videos. Dawson Ryder, signing out.